once again, Patrick returns to his own time on Slemish. He has visited the ancient mythical past of Ireland, and now the near future. Already, he has misgivings about the direction his country and its people have come from and are going to. But the real test is yet to come. As Patrick is about to find out what lies further down future roads, Somehow he will have to put the pieces of the visions together, in order to follow through with his destiny. Is this treachery the friendship of the future? Is this the Irish we? Is what we're after witnessing the fruits of my work? Patrick, Patrick, you are taking this seriously to heart. Did you not heed the mummers when they spoke of fear and loyalty? That's what it takes. Power, its honor, and dishonor, is not confined to the Irish you know. Don't take it personally. How can I not take it personally? This has rattled me. Everyone has their price, Patrick. Gold, land, people. What do you think Ireland would have been like, were Strongbow and Dermid not to do business as they had done or are to do? There would be chaos. It still doesn't make it right though. This isn't about righteousness or not. It is about power. It is about the best worst case outcomes. It is never smooth, and almost always is, in some way, ugly. This is a very hard thing for me to accept. There is a way through the light of the Almighty. As both Dermid and Strongbow believed, as did their enemies. Sometimes everyone believes their way is the way. And they are the righteous, except, when everyone is praying to the same God, then it is no longer possible to justify the moral high ground. What now, O oh Fox? Your words have compounded my anger with confusion. I am unclear about how to resolve this. Don't try to. There must be something in your belief that allows for faith in both good times and bad. If there isn't, then you are going to find the rest of this journey, and the rest of your life, most challenging. This is my time to depart, Patrick. I wish you a fair wind, and, and an unwavering faith. Thanks, um, thanks Classy. No, Patrick, thank you. For the journey, the meeting, and the land. Patrick, before you go on a crusade, consider this. Is your mission now based on love or anger? If it is the latter, then how do you expect the seed you sow to blossom into anything other than wrath? I have heard enough. The times ahead have gone astray. I must warn people in my teaching about what not to do, to avoid alliances of convenience. There is nothing to be gained out of this, nothing but treachery. Indeed. You have well observed. But consider this too. Can you say for sure that this predicament will never appear in the future? Regardless of who is in power or no, even very good people are sometimes forced by their situation to compromise their position in order that they or their loved ones survive. Yes, yes, but where do you draw the line? Do you ultimately hand your daughter away to a savage to be wed in return for military advantage? Do you sacrifice the devil you know in the form of local foes, for the devil you don't in the form of a potentially much greater and more powerful tyrant? And yet both are God-fearing men, at least so they say outwardly. Beware, Patrick, the road ahead is populated, with those who claim to be devout, but suddenly become intoxicated with the power they find themselves possessing. They are not true men, they must not be, isn't he praying correctly? Or if they are, they are not doing so with their hearts, but for reasons of external face and appearance. And yet they will be accepted by the powers that be, as a necessary agent to control whatever it be, by fair means or foul will, but mostly foul will. Why, why don't you intervene? Free will, oh Patrick. Free will. In any event, they would only listen for a short passage of time before duping themselves and each other into a false sense of manifest destiny. When it comes to greed and pride, black can be argued white, 
and white black. That would never happen me. Believe me, I have heard this before, and made extraordinary predicaments too, which it concern you now, is no whether your faith would curdle this way, but whether your faith can be upheld, the spirit that you speak and display now, is strong and true, but you have yet to encounter truly challenging times, times that are so challenging, that it would seem a farce, to give glory to the Almighty. Show me, tell me, I won't stand down from this challenge. Very well, Patrick. This verse is sure, there can be, no other way. Well in on details is poem bliss. Listen, watch and learn for what people say. There is overwhelming courage as well as deep and dark despair, but courage, in this case is unconditional. As is despair, bottomless. Greetings, Patrick. Who are you? Were you sent here by the Almighty? Two questions. An interesting start. You could say I was sent here, or you could say that I came here on my own. Let's split the difference, and say that I was allowed to come here. And what you use is an animal, a creature such as yourself as, as an instrument in the Almighty's plan of revelation? How can you guide let alone give glory? You are simply a scavenger, a creature of carrion. Yes, of course, you are right. What use am I indeed? I am just a scavenger, a creature of carrion, yet here I am. But more to the point, who are you to judge what qualifies as a messenger or an agent of the divine? Instinct, pure instinct. If I am to be led to the way of the light, if I am to be led to the way of the light, the torch bearer must be true, and I suspect you are not, not even close. Is that so? You see the true torch bearer, one that is easily and childishly identifiable, one that fits your naive view of the world. What do you know or understand of the world, Patrick? Are you some sort of an expert? No doubt inspired by the movement of the sheep on this barren mountain to modulate your theories. I know all that I need to know, and anything else is excess carriage to mental faculty. Nothing but a confusing addition to natural reason. Natural reason knows no limitations. Give me any payload of information or theories. I will not run from fact. I will embrace them and deal with them. I like using the scales of reason as often as possible. What about using feeling and intuition? What you feel, Patrick. What you feel. Just because you have opinion does not grant you moral or intellectual authority over what is right or wrong for everyone else. What do you really know about people, Patrick? I know that people have to be saved from themselves. Time and time again, I have come across folk who are potentially good, but who ultimately are lost to their baser instinct. Clumsy and unrefined, Patrick. Not lost. Clumsy and unrefined is a more mature choice of words. They just need to accept and learn to be responsible, rather than offer everything away to some magical higher authority. Don't you think, Patrick? Nonsense. They are lost and you know it. You know it because of the time it takes you to calibrate your sentences. All clever. All premeditated. Nothing straight from the heart. All from the head. You are nothing but a liar, Raven. Nothing can be further from the truth, oh, Patrick. I am not a liar. In fact, my real flaw is my honesty. I cannot soften a landing, or spin news. I always disclose news in a standard way. I believe that the earnest lies with you, and your kind, to call all things as they really are, rather than adorn them to a fashion, or play favorites with the history books to modify an agenda. You will quickly find a convenient way, of dressing up a means to justify an end, until, this art of embellishing truth, becomes a natural way of doing business. Before long, you will be whitewashing facts and cutting people down who call foul or stand in your way. Enough of this babble. You are only speculating. And you are not. You are speculating all the time. All your ideas of what the world is, should and can be, are based on solitary moonlit dreams here on Slemish. I am basing my opinions not on speculation, 
but on the experience. From high in the air, looking down on the battlefield, the seas, lands, forests, on the kingdoms that rise up and fall, on fledgling promises of a young prince to the despairing whisper of an old, dying king, on the exuberant morning of a battle, to the dreary evening of carting off the dead, and the difference between the two, one short day, an eternity. Let's have a deep look, Patrick. Let's have a look at the history of this land, and you can judge whether it is fate or otherwise. You can judge whether it is destiny or choice.
how can this happen? But, surely. The same way anything happens in history. There are times of plenty and times of lean. There are times of wealth and poverty. There are those empowered and those displaced. Surely these are the enemies of the Almighty, those who would allow their subjects to starve this Alas, way. Alas, Patrick, they are as devote to the Almighty as much as the impoverished. You can reframe a situation, until it eventually suits your needs. I am stunned at this. Well, sustain your surprise, as you are about to see a most important episode in the history of this land. A crossroads that will make you forget that you are on a mission in the first place. It's time for you to bear witness, Patrick. Watch on.